This company is turning paper back into something that feels just like wood. So, if you listen to the sound, it's wood. It's transforming newspapers into pencils and donating a portion to school children. You will see a student looking at this pencil like this. They are wondering, is this newspaper? Print readership is on the rise in Kenya, which means a lot of newspapers end up in landfills. And when newspapers decompose, they're one of the worst pollutants. That's where these two brothers saw golden opportunity. Let's use the pencil to advocate for climate awareness. So when it comes to helping kids and the environment, how far can these pencils really go? Momo Pencils gets most of its newspapers from households near its facility here in Nairobi. Only about 42% of Kenyans have internet access, so many read the paper instead. So the raw material is available everywhere. They start with a single sheet of newsprint and cut it down to size. The double page gives you about three pencils. We go through around nine processes to get a pencil. And any excess paper they cut off? We use as an insert of the pencil. So that basically there is no waste. They'll use that scrap to fill any open spaces between the paper and the graphite, which is the only material they don't source locally. They paste the graphite onto the page with wood glue. We believe is what makes the pencil harder to become like wood. This is something that you have to be trained to do. If you put a lot of paste on it, it takes longer to dry. This machine rolls the pages into these pencil-sized tubes, which then get laid out in the sun. Nature is always best. About a week later, they cut and resize the pencils. The workers send them down one by one. There's dust out there. You know, it's, it's sun dried, it's open. So we might find that the pencil is a bit rough. Once the surface feels smooth enough, they'll print on a design, which clients can have customized. This machine laminates them. It can do about 700 pencils in half a minute. That also comes at a price, though. What's the cost? It's expensive. <laughs> this machine costs about $18,000. But automating steps like this one has helped the company go from producing about 500 pencils a day when it started in 2017 to as many as 100,000 today. Finally, workers sharpen the pencils one at a time. The company donates 3,000 of these every year as part of its bigger goal to supply one million children with free pencils. But making that happen isn't easy because producing them is costly. Our biggest expense is the salaries to start with. Momo told us it pays its workers $15 a day, which is about three times the minimum wage in Kenya. The company's still small though, so it's had to be strategic about which businesses it sells to. Target the ones who are aligned to the vision and the fact that they embrace the element of eco-friendly and Kenyan manufacturing. Momo's pencils cost about three times the price of standard ones, which Kenya imports mainly from China. A shopkeeper will say, you have to sell this pencil to me at 10 shillings. I'm getting this pencil at 4 shillings. So what is the difference between these two? You see, they don't understand the meaning of saving the environment. What we're doing is that we're saving the environment. Globally, we cut down, on average, 82,000 trees every year to produce about 14 billion traditional wooden pencils. In the U.S. alone, another half a million trees die every week to make one Sunday run of newspapers. That's enough to fill nearly 1,000 football fields with trees. Paper accounts for over a quarter of total waste in landfills. And when that paper decomposes, it emits toxic methane gas which can trap over 20 times more heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. In fact, the EPA has named paper as one of the main contributors to the methane pollution generated by landfills. If all those newspapers were turned into pencils instead, we could supply the planet with pencils for five years, every Sunday. But Momo's mission goes beyond saving trees. So far, they've donated more than 50,000 pencils. We would go to schools that have a large population of children from slums or from poor families. Just to empower them was a very big moment for us. We followed them on a recent visit. So you have children going to school, they don't have a book, they don't have a pen. You have a class of like 60 students and a teacher has like 30 students who have writing materials, the rest don't have. 
In Kenya, nearly 20% of people over the age of 15 can't read or write. That's really high compared to many developed countries. Part of the problem is that families often can't afford to buy the children the basic tools they need to learn how to write. So we realized that there's an impact we can make by donating the pencils to these children. And with every school visit, they bring seedlings, which they then help the children plant. So far, they've planted over 10,000 trees. And while Mahamud says that's a start, he hopes that what he's doing here will grow. The pencil creates equality in education, creates a future, and gives hope to those who are getting an education at an early stage. It also is the tool that can be able to help transform and impact the children to become better citizens, to create a better world for themselves. Hi, this is Will Story from the World Wide Waste team. Over the past year, we've looked at bricks made out of plastic in Kenya, tiles made out of smog in India, and mats made out of human hair used to clean up oil spills in San Francisco. We want to bring you more stories that take a look at garbage and creative ways people deal with it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We also read all the comments. If you have an idea for a video you'd like to see, let us know.